You're back. Welcome. Part four of the Ram Revival. Previously, we removed the radiator, um, got the ATF or the trans cooler lines out of the way, everything along those lines. <laughs> and, uh, for the tool people, it came in here uh, Sunday night, and uh, you know, Sunday's kind of my cleaning day, right? So, I took care of that, got out here. And lo and behold, it reeked of ballastal, and I thought, no, it must be that antifreeze that we spilled at the end of the night last night, about midnight. Nope, the thing of ballastal, if you recall, I paid for the big one, fell off of my uh, workbench somehow, the sprayer cracked, and uh, somehow it also, the cap came off. So uh, I would say 90, 95% spilled, so uh, that's a pleasant smell to come in on. <laughs> but uh, speaking of coming in on, I am in the engine bay, literally I am sitting. I'm glad we didn't remove the uh, upper radiator support brace yet because it's currently serving as my chair. Keeping my feet down here, kind of dangling uh, cautiously above the power steering cooler. So what I want to do is kind of highlight where we're at. Uh, we still have the upper radiator hose tucked away behind the master cylinder simply because we can't get to the clamp to take the thing off and get it out of our way. Uh, we may achieve that tonight. I'm not sure this is not near as comfortable as I thought it was, but uh, where we're at, we've got two things we kind of kind of want to attempt to tackle here. Maybe more, depends on the time frame. An alternator and an AC compressor, right? So, if you look at the alternator, you'll see these are in the way. And if you think, well, what are those? Obviously, air conditioner lines, right? And they would come back here to the compressor. Uh, we're trying to do this without evacuating the system. I'm not sure if it's possible. Well, we're just kind of winging it, seeing as we go. Uh, obviously, we can't drive the truck somewhere to have it professionally evacuated. I was looking up prices on machines earlier. But uh, typically, air conditioning, not something I deal with. I'm not well versed in it, not experienced. Uh, uh, the way I look at it is parasitic drag, it eats power, and something else that goes out, and I have four windows, which, you know, that's my air conditioner, but, uh, hey, so, looking at the lines, though, wouldn't make sense for us to jump into the alternator first, we need to start with the compressor, and looking at the compressor, we can see there's a couple of things going on. We've got one bolt right here towards the front, we've got another one conveniently blocked by the lines. Uh, so hopefully that's a short one. You can see it right there at the tip of my finger. Uh, these are all 13 millimeter, if I'm thinking correctly. And then coming back here towards the intake manifold, you'll note I threw a uh, paper towel, shop rag, on top of our throttle body just so nothing drops in on it. Uh, realistically, we probably need to clean that up so we eliminate the chances of me slipping there and my hand coming there knocking stuff down. Uh, not that it would really matter much at this point, but you know, it's good practice uh, in the event that you were just, say, brand new engine changing a leaking thermostat housing, something along those lines. But the compressor, in addition to these two bolts, it's got two more in the back, which you can see one there, the other right there, and those suckers look to be connected to a bracket. This would be the black stealth shaped triangular piece, and that is going to drop down there to the intake manifold. Intake manifold, of course, on these magnums is called the kegger. The thing is massive. That's why way back there you can't even see it. We have a distributor cap with wires and a coil wire coming off of it, so it's all occluded by the sheer height of that top tunnel ram, uh, or not tunnel ram, kegger I should say, it's almost like a tunnel ram but without the power. Now coming in over here looking ahead to the alternator, right, we've got this bolt also to the intake manifold and then we've got this kind of stud coming up with a nut off of it. I want to say these are both 14 millimeter. Also coming to the alternator mounting points, we have a 14 millimeter here and then this one that looks like a nut, that's because it is. The bolt head would be on the back side, about where you see my uh, finger dancing there. That's also 14 millimeter. If you're ever just doing anything with the front accessories, take this one out and you can swivel her over. But in our case, we want to get it off completely. And of course, in addition to the two mounting points, uh, we've got a dipstick here. I didn't check to see that side. I'm going to go out just finger guessing. It's going to be 14. We'll see if I'm right later. But there are a couple of electrical connections, not only to the alternator, where one would assume they would be, but also to the compressor. So uh, on the alternator, we've got a clip right here. You can kind of see this green wire coming out of this you know, convoluted tubing and it just tucks in right to the top of that and then the alternator, the main stud wire which if you can see this, I'm gonna squeeze down here and then mirrored on the other side 
and this has never <laughs> ever been off but essentially I may need my uh, other hand to do this actually but essentially that'll come off we most likely have a stud with a nut there so we'll want to make note of that then all these other connectors that you're seeing down in that valley those are harnesses to our fuel injectors uh, you're gonna want to label those for sure like this you can't really cross them right it's kind of foolproof you still want to label them in good practice but the injector harnesses, you could conceivably cross those pretty easily. Uh, so my advice, label them, mark them, paint pen, whatever you've got. If you want to tape white and alternate, just do that. <laughs> Something that'll save you time in the long run. Uh, coming in over here, I'm trying to make note of the routing of everything. As strange as it may seem, this main charge wire... Uh, off the alternator comes up about to this point enters convoluted tubing it ducks underneath all right this is all seems trivial now when i reinstall and you reinstall this will be important and you'll be glad that we took advantage of this but that tucks underneath this bracket that runs from the manifold to the alternator and then it tucks underneath uh, the stealth shaped bracket that holds the AC compressor and then just for the sake of us documenting it It's gonna come out right there. You can see the convoluted tubing. I'm running on across right above the valve cover ducks under what will be uh, the outlet here off of the water pump and then it runs all the way over here to power distribution Okay, so basically when in doubt on your main alternator charge wire Put it under. You're going to be right 100% of the time, at least based off the factory install. <laughs> okay. Now our uh, throttle linkages and stuff here, we want to make note of those. They are going over the top of everything. It's going to disappear down here. The other one ducks into this kind of nicer braided loom. And it, of course, is going to run over this direction <laughs> under the uh, battery tray. But uh, hopefully we've gotten enough showcased here let's try to find our connectors let me actually get our good buddy out of here and uh, cycle him over into no he won't reach underneath <laughs> and just above our throttle body right so right here we've got an electrical connector entering to the compressor it's going to be kind of like the lime green lead you see it'll plug in there and then our second one which is going to feed in right here kind of behind the pulley probably for the clutch comes out of the convoluted tubing and you can see it's this clip right here so this is kind of like a safety release so essentially what i want to start with is these four electrical connectors we're going to release here and pull this apart for our ac compressor we're going to disconnect here and then on the alternator we're going to pull this big one off the stud and then get this one off the top side so i'll do that i'll check back in see if we had any issues and we will take it from there all right you'll notice our angle has changed that's because i've descended into the the belly of the beast here <laughs> so i gotta say freaking steering gear line is really the hazard there as well as the cooler if it's equipped with one on your vehicle but uh, nonetheless i kind of want to update you on what i did right here uh finally got this cover off that revealed as we said it should the stud of course this is going to tuck in it's kind of got that wing that'll be the top side piece and then right here i've gone ahead and put this nut back on that's a 13 millimeter nut you're just going to break it this direction you're going to be going towards the intake manifold that'll break her free spins right off pull this uh this one took a little it was the toughest clip believe it or not even though it was the easiest access i had my little chip lifter here and uh, pressed down i was able to slide out so this one has the uh, weather pack connection it's got a white face on it that's going to plug in right there again uh, you shouldn't screw this one up i wouldn't think unless these are all similar which i don't believe they would be <laughs> so essentially for our reference you've got green kind of like a true green color and then that one's kind of just like a true blue so green and blue that's going to be your top alternator connection as you can see no clip on any side except the top so that's going to be critical when we press back in and then this one again going to be hard to screw that up coming in to this side this clip came off super easy it's the one that goes up to the compressor it's kind of got like a fluorescent 
yellow, almost like the power steering cap, but just in fluorescent, right? And so it's going to plug it right here to our compressor. And then with this one, you're going to have to push out on that kind of red safety lock. When we open her up, it's a blue connection here. I'm hoping it's color coded. I actually haven't looked at it. It's not, it's red. But the two prongs that you can see there with the red that are going to slide in to the blue connector here. And then when you make that connection, it's going to be important that you press this back towards the oil fill cap or your driver's side, fender well, master cylinder, whatever you need to reference it as. Push that in, that will lock it back into place. So, only tool I needed was this uh, chip one, and that was just ironically for what I thought would have been the easiest connection to free. So, it uh, goes to show what I know. Nonetheless, I think now we're ready to start tackling these bolts and brackets and see where we get. Keep in mind, uh, if you take your sway bar off, you'd have a bit more leg space down here. I'm very cramped. But uh, I'm at least not leaning against the radiator and damaging that, so we've got that going for us. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of assess all this, see what we get into. I can't remember, I think I did mention that. There's a better view from this vantage point for you. Again, this bracket here, that locator, and then this unused stud that you can see right here, that's your factory airbox connection point. So when you pull that clamshell off, you'd have your filter, you lift it out, you look straight down, there would be a nut, and that's what it adheres to. So uh, that said, I'm going to grab some tools. I'm going to see what I can do here. Because uh, ironically, as I crawled in here a little bit into the, trying to get these clips off, I need to go to the bathroom. So I'm going to try to uh, get it out and see what all we can get done. All right, I had to run inside. Couldn't uh, couldn't quite make it. So always good to have a clear mind when you're doing this stuff. Needless to say, uh, everything going good here. We've got the uh, 14 millimeter bolt out of this bracket. It's positioned up here on the uh, cowl. I always like to try to keep things in line in the event that we kind of kind of lose sight of where they go. We've got this crown nut. That's just a washer and a nut combined there that would go on this stud. Uh, we've freed that up now. I'm thinking that'll be sufficient and we can just leave the clamp. I'm not 100% sure yet. You'll note though that the lines run underneath, of course, the upper radiator hose, which we're getting closer to getting out of our life. The catch is though, you'll note, I've got the uh, screwdriver here where the stealth bracket went right. And we had long uh, 13 millimeter screws or half inch. Coming in, we had that one, which was a uh, it was a short guy. I'm not sure. Yeah, right up there. See what I'm talking about? I've got these two right as they came out, and then at the top side, the back of the bracket, I actually have that bolt. This one came out from right there. The problem is this guy. Okay. Um, I watched videos, you know, back when I had my thumb injury in anticipation of this moment. And no one ever mentioned anything about it, but that line is directly above it. Uh, I broke it free, had to use a wrench, and uh, just kind of turned it as best I could up until we hit that hard line. And uh, I was thinking, you know, if I don't clear, we're going to just have to evacuate the system, and that's going to slow me down big time. So uh, what I did, though, it looks like we are clear. I'm thinking so anyway. Obviously, I need two hands got to push this hose out of the way, got to swing the compressor. Again, in my case, I left the aftermarket air box here in hopes that I could just drop it down. I'm about to find out if that was smart or stupid. I don't really know how much play or flex we can put in this stuff, uh, but we're going to find out. Then we'll kind of have this cleared out to uh, move on to the alternator. So I will update you as we go. All right, so progress point noted. <laughs> You'll note the compressor is gone. That's because it's over there, and if you also note, our giant air box from the aftermarket cooled air kit is also gone. It just would have put way too much of a bind on those lines. I didn't really want to do it. I've already kind of cleaned the wheel well up. Just have it sitting there for now, and uh, when we pull the engine, I might kind of try to tie it off with some rope or something just to be safe. But this frees up a ton of space right here. And uh, that bolt, the one that was right there, it's still in place here. I mean, as you can see, I'm not making this up. That line is just, you're not taking that bolt off on this truck with these lines unless you remove the lines from the compressor. Obviously, that would defeat the point of us trying to, you know, avoid that situation. So, uh, where we're left now, that's out of the way. We need to tackle the alternator. If you recall, we have the bracket up here, uh, 14 millimeter bolts. And then coming down, we've got 14s there and there. Uh, let's see here. I'll come over to my handy dandy stash pile. Uh, this is a 14, so let's double check. 
confirmed. So the bracket on the alternator side is 14. That was 14. I've got it sitting up there on the cowl. Uh, this is 14 coming down. The lower bolt is 14. That is a nut, is the best I can tell because of, no? Maybe it is a bolt head. Yeah, it's a bolt head. It just looks like a nut. Uh, keep in mind, I can only lean back so far. So the bolt runs through forward to back as it should, aviation style. And uh, you can see the nut here in the back. So we're going to need to grab that with a wrench and then uh, pull this off with a socket. And then this guy here is probably 13. So probably going to need to pull the coil wire, which awkwardly I can thread my hand in there. Get that out of our way just so we can get in easier with a uh, socket but uh, there it is we need to of course get this dipstick off of the alternator before we pull the alternator and then of course if you don't have a spare set of hands handy when you release the alternator make sure you have somewhere to place it but it's that magical time where i can't do any more with one hand so i've got to go off camera but again bottom top and then our uh, mounting bracket that would attach all the way back to the intake manifold. So I'm going to get started and we will put you back here in just a second. Victory is claimed. I will tell you right now, when you uh, remove the hardware for this, this is the bottom end that would bolt up here to count on the front accessory bracket. You can see that's what you're working with in terms of space, but you'll then note this bushing right here. That thing is tight. I mean, the fitment here is really, really solid. Uh, it's not like the old spacers where you kind of cut them yourself and call it good. Uh, what I did to get that off is literally just shimmy it. I'd grab the alternator and I would just kind of shake it up and away. And eventually, of course, that does the trick. Be patient with it. Make sure you've got everything removed. I also want to point out where I sat it on top of this bracket that would run to the intake manifold. The little locator thing. Turns out it actually holds this main alternator uh, charge wire. And so that's something I was unaware of. So that's good to note. What we've gained access to now, though, you can actually see right here where you kind of see that grayish white color i'm carefully watching the alternator because i saw it just slip <laughs> do not want that to fall uh, but that grayish white color that is a constant tension clamp you'll see also through that provision in our front accessory bracket right back there okay that's <laughs> yeah, she was riding down on the uh, the pulley was turning on the radiator hose there so not good but that uh, constant tension clamp that is the bypass hose this is why it's such a pain in the butt a to figure out if it's leaking and b to actually service it so that's kind of what you're up against if you have that problem also you can see the other constant tension clamp the big black one kind of on the nasty looking hose that pipe that comes up that is your thermostat housing this isn't like an old car where it's a real short stack that's pretty tall neck on it and uh, we're going to need to get that off. That said, I do like to note what the factory did. So on the radiator hose, note we've got that clip that holds those two wires. And then coming forward, there's kind of like a heat shrink there as it enters that braided section. Again, that was kind of, I guess, just for added security. Uh, we will probably try to reuse or replicate that. Doesn't really look like we were leaking. If we were, it was nothing major. It kind of dried out. There's no puddles or anything. Again, I think we were legitimately just a failed water pump. <laughs> Started pushing fluid out to let us know. And along with the wine that came a little bit after. But uh, yeah, I mean, dry inside that thermostat housing, so that's good. Now, the front cover. I'm at a point I can't really showcase all the bolts and we may just this may be this part of the deal uh, it's getting late it's Sunday night I got work in the morning but uh, the front cover is going to also involve bolts that run through the water pump which you think hey that's good well it's also kind of bad because I think some of them go to water jackets in the block uh, at least one on each side I would think just you know going with everything I've experienced in the past and we very well may come in and actually drain the block uh, since I'm thinking we're probably going to pull the motor and rebuild. Uh, there's no harm there. If I break it off, I break it off. You know, we'll just deal with it up front. Uh, but I would kind of need to be under the vehicle and uh, outside of it. But I just, my apologies if I seem distracted. I'm trying to not let this fall. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I uh, also want to give a shout out to the Astro Light because that thing has never been charged this entire process. It's still going. Nothing else is. Uh, you can also kind of see the cracked dash there for those of you wanting to follow along with this entire project. We're going to take care of that too. But I've got all my hardware there. I know what it was, know where it goes. And uh, I do want to point out though, getting rid of that uh, cold air box. There was one place where it rubbed the paint on the fender, but coming down, good lord, that opened me up some space. So I've just grown accustomed to having that there. I mean, it's been on for so terribly long, but uh, having that out of my way, man, you've got full access to the plugs, the exhaust manifold, you'd almost reach the Y connection. But uh, again, I'm thinking just because of it's getting late and I've got to fish this thing out, I think I'm going to call it a night. Plus it reeks in here because that ballast will spill. <laughs> So uh, I don't want the door up because the moths are out now. That would just exasperate my conditions here in the engine bay. But I think I'm going to call it good. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. Again, I'll have all this written up, hopefully with decent pictures. Similarly, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all three at LoneStarMopars. You can follow along there for updates on everything else that we do. But uh, for that said, I'm going to get out of here. i to run to the bathroom again. And uh, like I said, I got a shower, get ready for work in the morning. So, with that said, I hope you enjoyed. We basically removed the AC compressor and the alternator. I'm gonna document everything, and then I'm gonna try to research what goes to a water jacket. If it's out there, I'll try to find it. But once again, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.